Hello and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. Today we have kind of an exciting um, thing to do, but first I'm going to start with a huge announcement. Jim and I are announcing that we are not going to move. Now I know that that won't be an announcement for very many of you because you didn't know that we were planning to move. But here is what happened last June when we went up to the Pacific Northwest for my grandson's graduation. I was reminded of um, living up there and what a, a wonderful place it is to live. And um, Jim and I have thought for quite a few years that we would, um, as we get to our later years, that we would want to downsize quite a bit because this place takes an awful lot of work for us. And so we had decided, we, we had decided that we were going to do that, we just didn't know where. And in June, it became apparent that the Northwest was the place where we were going to go. Well, kind of a long story short, we worked for three and a half straight months getting things ready to put the house on the market. We did put the house on the market. We were going to make this big announcement that we were going to move and then do a video on how to pack up your food storage and the whole thing. But um, day after day went by and not very many people came through the house at all. Our house didn't sell after almost two months being on the market and we became, in fact, we did one video and several of you commented on how lovely our place here was. And it started to make us rethink our decision and we ultimately decided that we are going to stay here and boy, oh boy, are we happy about that decision. It appears that it is the right decision for us. And so we are not going to move. And now why is that pertinent to this video? Well, because I have always had in all of my previous homes double ovens and I've always managed my kitchen with two ovens. Well, here I have only one oven. And for the 13 years that we have lived in this house, I've managed okay. Sometimes I do extra cooking outside on the, on the camp stove or in our little camp oven. But I finally just decided, okay, I've got to have more of an oven type appliance to use, especially with the holidays coming up and to kind of um, compensate for the fact that all the homes that we picked out on the other end had double ovens and this one still doesn't. So we ordered a Hamilton Beach um, turkey roaster. And so this is going to be the unboxing and it, that um, Amazon just delivered it uh, to our back porch a few minutes ago. But look at the shape of the box. It's dinged all on all the corners. There are torn pieces and it looks like it may even have been partially opened. And so rather than we have a turkey that what we're going to use it um, to actually cook a turkey in this video. And so I was going to wait until after we thawed that turkey. That turkey is left over from last year. We always buy two or three turkeys at Thanksgiving time and put a couple of them in the freezer. And we still have one from last year, so that's the one I was going to thaw. Well, it's still out there in the freezer. But I cannot wait to open this, not just because I'm excited about it, but because if it is damaged on the inside, then we're going to be sending it back. And so I can't wait for two more days for the turkey to thaw. So we're going to open it up, check its condition, and then we will probably come back in a couple of days to actually cook the turkey for this video. So here it is. I see fingerprints right there. It makes me wonder if it was opened. It was a day late coming. They said it was delivered yesterday, and then, of course, it didn't come yesterday. All right, it appears that everything is okay. All right, so continuing with the unboxing, I'm going to remove the styrofoam right here. It's like the lid and the rack are here.
I'm going to plug it in to see if it actually works. We'll check that in a minute. So here are the instructions. I even went up online and got the instructions for cooking a turkey in this so that I could just seamlessly do it. But since it came with damage on the packaging, I decided I needed to redo our timing and um, go ahead and open it up right now. So this is a rack that fits inside. So far it's still cold. There's not any kind of an indicator light. You have to push the button in or something like that. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna give it five minutes or so, and we'll be back. Okay, while we are waiting, I just pulled out the instructions. So, looks like we can roast turkeys, a whole chicken, a beef roast, a fresh pork roast, a picnic shoulder ham, fully cooked already, whole ham fully cooked, so we would just be warming those up. That's what we would do in our oven anyway. We can bake our favorite cakes, pies, breads, or casseroles like a conventional oven. That's great. We can do steaming, um, warming rolls, biscuits, etc. So it looks like it's going to be quite versatile. I had one of these. In fact, I had a couple of them years ago. All right. So I'm a little bit familiar with how they work. Oh yes, oh yes, we're good to go. It's nice and hot in there. Okay, okay, now I'm excited. <laughs> so we will be back just as soon as that other, that our turkey has thawed and we are ready to get it going in here and we'll finish out the video with roasting a turkey. Well, we have a thawed turkey right here and we are ready to go. Now I am following the Hamilton Beach recipe it's a different recipe than I've ever used before. I'll put it in the link in case anyone is interested, but most of us have our favorite ways to cook turkeys. Before I put the turkey in, I just want to show you one thing that I have discovered on this. There are two things that I'm not super happy about. Uh, one is the raw edge of this metal right here. I was wiping fingerprints off. That raw edge would have cut into my finger had it not been covered with the uh, cloth that I was using. So I'm aware of it now, and so I can easily avoid doing that. The other thing is it doesn't really have a temperature light indicator. So I am using this. Now this is my infrared shot, and I just uh, check the temperature. It's up to 325, which is where it needs to be. Now, I have stuffed this turkey with celery and onions, as in the recipe. And the next thing I'm going to do is to just now brush it with a little bit of oil. And I'm using canola oil, and I know that drives some of you crazy, but I've read everything there is to read, pro and con, on canola, and I'm still using canola. but please feel free to use whatever your choice is. Then I have a little spice mix that is onion salt, onion, salt, onion, onion powder, salt, pepper, paprika, rosemary, thyme, and sage. And I'm just gonna sprinkle that over the top and I'm just going to pat that into the 
turkey itself. Now here's the rack. I'm going to transfer this <clears throat> now to the rack. Wipe my hands. And here we go. And I just realized I should have done that with hot gloves. I was really careful not to touch the sides. But next time I know that I will use my heat resistant gloves to do that. And it's supposed to be done in about two hours. <clears throat> so we'll see about that. It's a 19 pound turkey. So we're looking forward to having turkey before the holiday season starts. And actually we're gonna have a ton of turkey left. So we will be cutting that into slices, adding gravy to it, and then um, freezing it in meal-sized portions to add to our level one preparation as we are getting ready to, um, as, as we continue preparing for our 60 days of meals using our freezer, refrigerator, and pantry. So we will be back a little bit later when we check the temperature on this. It needs to get up to 165 internal temperature and I have a probe that we'll be doing that with. So we will see you very soon. Well, it has been exactly three hours, almost to the minute, since we first put this turkey in. So a little longer than the recipe predicted. Notice I have my heat resistant gloves on and the turkey, this is a self basting lid and so moisture falls down on the turkey so that's a good thing. <clears throat> and we're going to lift it out. And put it right here. Well, it is gorgeous. It looks like it's almost falling off the bone. And then we have lots of really good drippings in here. And so I'm going to try an experiment. Oh, I don't need these heat gloves anymore. All this good stuff I'm gonna turn into gravy. And I'm, I am not gonna strain it. I like gravy with little pieces in it. Here is some of our frozen roux that we made in roux part deux, part two um, video. And I will put the link to that video right up here. So if you want to see how we did that, you can check out that video. So this should give us some good thickening. This is a lot of juice, so I'm gonna put a lot of roux in. So we'll see how this works. It just melts instantaneously, which is really good. So we turned the camera off for a minute and while we did that, I strained the gravy. It was driving me nuts. And we've got it up to boiling. Still not enough roux in there yet to thicken this up. So I'm gonna add some more. I also have some turkey fat in there that may not react with the roux very well. I may need to add some flour to absorb that. So I'm adding a little more and it just melts almost instantly. Starting to thicken. We'll give it a minute so that it melts all of the roux. All right, it's almost there. All right, that's gonna do it. Really nice gravy. Now it has some extra turkey fat on it. I'm gonna turn this off. 
So we have a lovely cooked turkey and a lot of gravy. I'm uh, probably going to add some more bouillon to this and make a larger amount of gravy for what I want to do with packaging up meals. But I want to take just a, a tiny taste of this turkey right here to see how it tastes. I want to know how juicy it is. It's very juicy. It's very, very good. So this will be great for us to package up in meals for our freezer. Now, what I'm going to do with this gravy, I'm going to put it in a quart jar because we're not going to have potatoes and gravy tonight or anything like that. And I have the time to where I'm going to put that gravy in a quart jar, put it in the refrigerator, let the fat congeal, and then I will just lift the turkey fat off at the top of the gravy. And that will give me some really smooth gravy. So we are going to enjoy this turkey. This does a fine job cooking a turkey with the two little caveats that I mentioned earlier in the video. I really like it. It does a very good job. So it's a keeper for us and we're going to enjoy it, especially during the holiday season when I can have a turkey in the oven and bake rolls in here or pies or vice versa. And I think it will really help with meal preparation for a, a nice size gathering that we are going to be having at Thanksgiving time. So thank you so much for being with us. We hope you enjoyed this and we will see you very soon for another video.